Hello everyone. Uh, first of all, let me introduce you to David Speakerholter, who we've had on before with our non-transitive dice video, which is one of the prices on offer in our competition today. But first of all, did you not get the memo? Did you not? We were going to dress up for what? this? I've for, the, for the people at home? This is my mathematical dress. This is you this dressed is up, is it? Dressed. Okay, so David, tell us about the competition we did. Well, in his last video, James asked you to guess how many jelly beans were in this jar. And he's had over a thousand entries. We've had over a thousand responses. We're going to analyse the results. And we've had a winner which is in this envelope. Yes, you're right to go, ooh, yes. The winner is in this envelope, the correct answer. I did, I did count all the jelly beans myself, but we will reveal this at the end of the video. So last time I told you about the wisdom of the crowd. So a, a mathematician called Sir Francis Galton wanted to know if a crowd of people could decide what the correct weight was of a butchered ox. Now, David, what do you think of wisdom of the crowds? Is it real or is it bunk? Well, it worked in Galton's case because he was at a country fair where people knew quite a lot about meat and about what an animal looked like after being chopped up and laid out and what that actual quantity of meat would come to when they added it all up. But um, when you're trying to estimate how many beans and something like that, that's quite tricky because you're trying to estimate essentially a volume from just a um, two-dimensional view of it. People could have some systematic biases. In other words, they could, on, the, on average even, guess too high or too low. And I'm going to be really interested to see what the results are. Yeah, so, so the wisdom is important. Exactly. So unfortunately, we did have to reject some of the outliers, which I just thought were typos, really. And to be fair, uh, Sir Francis Galton had to do this himself when he did it in his original problem. So I felt justified doing that. Uh, there were, as well, some obvious joke answers. Uh, if there does turn out to be a Google of jelly beans inside the jar, you'll still win, don't worry, you're still in the competition. Uh, Francis Galton actually was charging sixpence, which he thought would be enough to deter joke answers like that. So in future, that's what we'll do. We'll start charging sixpence. We could make 60 quid out of this. Um, but uh, there might as well be some bias, uh, because in this case, people could see other people's answers as well. And we're not sure. Uh, well, but David, take us through what happened. Take us through the data. Let's have a look. OK, here is the distribution of the judgments that were made, the guesses that were made. We can see here they range from you know, very low right up to nearly 10,000. Some people thought there were nearly 10,000 jelly beans in that jar. Most of them are around about a bit below between 1,000 and 2,000. And we see a peak here, but a long tail with some people thinking 3,000, 4,000, 5,000 jelly beans in the jar. So we've got a very non-symmetric distribution of judgments here. The problem when we've got a distribution like this, you know, a sort of skewed distribution, is that it's not at all clear what measure we should use when we want to say the average opinion. There's a number of different averages we could choose. Right, so we could use the most common answer, right, which is called the mode average. And in this case, the most common answer was 1,337. Bunch of nerds. What else could we use? We could use the mean. The arithmetic mean, it means you add up all the guesses that were made and divide by the number of people who entered the competition. And if you do that, you get a considerably higher value, about 2,059 jelly beans. Now the point about the mean is that it's very strongly influenced by these few people who thought there were 8,000 jelly beans in the jar. So instead we might want to use another type of average called the median average. So if I listed all the guesses in order and I took the middle value, uh, I actually got 1,729. Hey, it's Ramanujan's number. And in this case, uh, the median could be considered the uh, average person's judgment rather than the average judgment. So instead of looking at the data directly, we decided to take a look at the log of the data. So what is a log? The log is the power of 10 needed to make that number. So a thousand would have a power of three. It's three powers of 10. 10 times 10 times 10 is a thousand. So the log of a thousand is three. The log of 10,000 is four. It's four powers of 10. 10 times 10 times 10 times 10 is 10,000. And that's what we did. We took the data and we took the log of the data and this is what we got. When you do this you end up with a really nice symmetric distribution and um, in fact then we can fit a normal curve to that one of these standard old bell-shaped curves and it fits the data rather well and that means if we fit a normal distribution to data then we know how to take the uh, 
um, looking for the average, we should just take the sample mean of those logarithms of the observations in order to estimate the centre of this distribution. So this is what we did. We took the average of the log of the data and we found that the average power of 10 was 3.23. So if we take 10 to the power of 3.23, we get our average now as 1680. And this is called the geometric mean. It's the mean of the log of the data. And well, what's so good about this? The geometric mean is a good measure to use if you think the sort of mistakes people make are proportional mistakes. In other words, they're just as likely to get double the answer as half the answer. And if, that, if you think that, and that's what gives rise to shapes like this as a distribution, then you should use the geometric mean. So I think if I really believe there wasn't any systematic bias in people's judgments, I would say 1680 would be our best judgment. So now let's reveal the answer in this envelope, which David hasn't seen. So David, you're going to be revealing this answer soon. Honourable mentions, I think, uh, to these three people here who actually got the median average of 1,729. So these are average people right here. Uh, another honourable mention to Virtual Noodles, who was closest to our average value of 1,680. He actually got 1,681. Uh, but now to reveal the actual answer, which I'll give to David. Oh, this is so exciting. And the answer is 1616. 1616, which is actually within about 4% of our average, which is pretty good. And isn't it amazing how you can work like with actual real data? We've actually got a pretty good answer. Uh, congratulations to our winner, DDSS6 who actually got it on the nose, 1,616, and uh, I'll make up a pack for you. It's going to include this top trumps, mathematicians, and non-transitive dice, whatever I think of. So congratulations again, and if you have been, thanks for watching. Well, that's amazing. <laughs>